Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Origins. Today we're looking at the Kanto Bird Trio, which is Pidgey, Pidgeotto and Pidgeot. So let's get started. First up we have Pidgey. Its Japanese name is Popo. It is the tiny bird Pokemon and number 16 in the National X. It stands at only 0.3 meters tall or 1 foot and weighs 1.8 kilograms or 4 pounds. Pidgey is a normal flying type and it was originally in the original beta games was going to be called Pidge without the Y. Now Pidgey resembles a small plump bodied avian Pokemon. It is primarily brown with a lighter throat and belly, and both its feet and its beak are a pinkish grey colour. It has black markings around its eyes, and a small crest of brown and cream feathers above them. Anatomically, Pidgey does not resemble pigeons at all, as much as does finches or sparrows at least. However, there have been some references to Pidgey male, alluding to the reference to homing pigeons. Its species name, Tiny Bird, Added to the sound at the end of its name, the E bit, could suggest that Pidgey is based on chickadees. However, it and its evolutions appear to have more traits related to ospreys than pigeons or chickadees. There are no gender differences between Pidgey, and Pidgey's shiny form is a golden colour with sort of orangish coloured beak and feet. With Pokedex entries, we can see that it does not like to fight and if it has to attack, it will kick up sand to protect itself. The name Popo appears to be onomatopoeia of the sound a pigeon makes, which is Popopopo, or something along those lines. Pidgey could be a corruption of pigeon, or a combination of that with the word budgie, a type of bird, chickadee, also a type of bird, or pudgy, which refers to its plump physique. Then looking at its sprites throughout the years, obviously being introduced in Generation 1, we have quite a lot to look at here. In the original Japanese red and green games, we can see that it's, you know, you can sort of tell it's a Pidgey, not, not too much though. In red and blue, it's sort of just a slight adjustment to the sprite, whereas in yellow, you can actually see that it's definitely the Pidgey we, Pidgey we know and love. The back sprite is, you know, it's just its head and its sort of crest. Moving into Generation 2, we can see that in gold and silver and really crystal, we can see that, you know, it's just pretty much the same uh, sort of style, apart from crystal being sort of, like silver, sorry, being the wings down. Uh, and then in, in the back sprite, we can see, you know, it has a strange colouring on it with the pinkness. Um, that's really just the highlight, sort of, because it's a Game Boy Colour game, you couldn't really get too many colours in it. But, you know, it's a sort of highlight, the, the white, I suppose, or the cream coloured, sorry. And then Generation 3, we can see in Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald, it has a very sort of strange appearance, I'd say. Um, and then an emerald obviously is flapping its wings. In fire and leaf green it's much more like the yellow sprite we, we saw just now. Very similar to that indeed. And the back sprite is actually just a sprite from Generation 2 recolored, Which is uh, fairly cheap with Nintendo I must say. In Generation 4 in Diamond, Pearl and Platinum it is... I don't really like the sprite as much. It sort of seems to be walking back and forth or walking towards the camera or the fighter. Um, whereas in Hot Gold and Soul Silver again it's very similar to the fire and leaf green one except it's sort of got its head to its side, and it's sort of a less formal pose, you could say. With the back sprite being, you can see the majority of its body now. And then Generation 5, obviously we can see the whole of its back now, and its front is obviously, it looks a, a, pretty much like the Fire and Leaf Green one, however its beak looks a lot bigger, or in a different position to what it was in previous generations, so it does, it does look a bit funny. Um, and then obviously the animated sprite is pretty much just it moving around a bit, not, not too much there. Then with the sizes here, we can see that only, uh, only um, you know, one foot or 0.3 meters. It's a very small Pokemon indeed. You could probably just stand on it by accident. So we can definitely see why it's called the Tiny Bird Pokemon. Now moving on to its evolution, Pidgeotto or Pigeon, literally Pigeon. It is the Bird Pokemon and number 17 in the National Dex. It stands at 1.1 meters or 3 foot 7 inches tall and weighs 30 kilograms or 66.1 pounds. Like its pre-evolution, it is a normal flying type, and also, in the Generation 2 games, when Falconet is challenged for the first time, his Pidgeotto is actually under-leveled, a level which is Pokemon is unattainable in games other than Pokemon Yellow, Hot Gold, and Soul Silver. 
and in these games they can only be found in one location which is Viridian Forest. Now a Pidgey will evolve into a Pidgeotto starting at level 18, so fairly quickly evolving. Pidgeotto is a large brown raptor-like avian Pokemon. It is covered with brown feathers and has a cream coloured face and underside. It has a crest of pink feathers on its head and black streaks behind its eyes. The plumage of its tail alternates between red and yellow and it has powerful pinkish grey talons which it uses to grasp prey. Much like Pidgey, despite the name, its design appears to be less of a pigeon and more of an osprey or other bird of prey. There are no differences between male and female Pidgeotto, and a shiny Pidgeotto has a sort of dull golden body with bright gold head crest, claws and tail feathers as well as its beak. Pokedex entries tell us that it has outstanding vision and that its territory can span over 60 miles. The Japanese name Pigeon is literally Pigeon. Pidgeotto, however, is a corruption of Pigeon. Its name may also refer to Otto Lienthal, a pioneer of unpowered heavier-than-air flight. Then looking at the sprites through the ages, we can see in when it was first introduced in green and the red Japanese version, it seemed pretty much very like what the Pidgeotto we know today. Then in red-blue kind of just sits down a bit more, gets a bit pudgier it would seem, and then yellow stands up and that's really what we can see from now on. The back sprite being a simple sort of head crest and face area. In Generation 2, we then see it's pretty much the Pidgeotto, you can define it as a Pidgeotto from now on. Uh, and you can see gold silver crystal that it is, very good, very good design. You know, not much to say here apart from the fact that it's, you know, it's pink rather than red obviously because of the um, the colour issue, I guess you could say. And then the back sprite is simply just its head and it's some of its tail feathers there. In Generation 3, in Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald, it sort of gets more of a slimmer, I guess you could say, um, approach. And obviously in Emerald, it's uh, splaying its legs and crying into the sky. In Fire and Leaf Green, it kind of gets a bit bit wider, I guess you could say. There's a slight difference between sprite, not a huge difference there. Um, and then the back sprite, like much like Pidgey's, is just a recoloration of the sprite from Gold, Silver and Crystal. Then in Generation 4, we can see in Diamond, Pun and Platinum, it's actually flying, pretty much. Just right in the air with its legs splayed out. You can assume that's how it would swoop down to catch some of its prey, so that's not really the sight you want to see too much. And in Heart, Gold and Soul Silver, it's pretty much facing the opposite way to where it was in Generation 3, and it's looking very proud of itself, you could say. And then the back sprites looking, you know, minor majority of it looking like Generation 3 sprites, however, with a bit more of its back open and some more of its tail, and just you know, sort of crying a bit more going forward. And then in Generation 5, it kind of it takes back the Diamond Pearl Platinum Sprite and obviously makes it into a flying animated sprite here. And we can see the full back sprite now, and you can see, you know, just the whole of its back. It's, you know, flying very nicely here. And then on to size, we can see that at, you know, 1.1 meters or 3 foot 7 inches, it's a fairly large Pokemon, but not too large. You wouldn't really want to be flying on the back of a Pidgeotto, would you? If we now move on to Pidgeot, Pidgeotto's evolution, we can see that its Japanese name is Pidgeot. It is also the bird Pokemon, and number 18 in the National Dex. It stands at 1.5 meters or 4 foot 11 inches, and weighs 39.5 kilograms or 87.1 pounds. It is a normal flying type, and much like Pidgey really, in the original games, or the original beta, it used to have an extra T in its name, so sort of a Pidgeot, but with two Ts, so you know, very similar to Pidgeotto's name, which you know, wouldn't really be wanted there, would it? And a Pidgeotto will evolve into a Pidgeot starting at level 36. Now, Pidgeot is a large avian Pokemon, and its glossy plumage is brown with a cream underbelly. On its head, there is a red and yellow crest that's nearly as long as its whole body, and its fan like tail feathers are red also. However, they're also brown in the anime, and in some games, do alter between red and yellow, much like in. Pidgeotto sprites. Its beak and legs are pink and it has black markings around its eyes. Now Pidgeot, much like Pidgeotto, is not based on a pigeon at all, but so much as a bird of prey, particularly an eagle, an osprey or a falcon. In particular, its shiny form may be referencing a golden eagle, simply as we'll see in a minute, as you can see on the screen actually now at the moment, it's very golden. Its eye markings also strongly resemble the sun and sky gods of Egyptian mythology, Ra and Horus. Much like Pidgey and Pidgeotto, there are no gender differences between Pidgeot, 
and the picture is shiny for, as I've just said, it's completely golden and has sort of light brown feet and a beak. Then with the Pokedex entries, we can see that it can actually fly a Mark II, which is very fast indeed, and also the gusts of winds it, it creates with its wings are capable of bending tall trees, so definitely not something you want to get in the way of. The name Pidgeot and also Pidgeot are combinations of Pigeon and Jet, which refers to its high speeds with the Mark II. Then looking at the sprites throughout the generations, in generation 1 the red and green sprite was fairly good actually, you can sort of tell as a Pidgeot, but then in red and blue I don't like this one as much since it seems to crouch down and you can't see much of its claws or you know general body shape. In yellow however it's pretty much flying through the air so you can tell it's a Pidgeot fairly easily, with the back sprite being a sort of, um, I don't know really, it doesn't make much sense to me, you can't see too much of it. Then in generation 2, we can see in gold, silver and crystal, it's pretty much sitting there in gold and crystal, but then in silver it's flying, swooping down. Uh, and I don't really like gold and crystal, it's, its mane or its, its crest seems to flow out from all directions, whereas it's just a simple one that flows back over its head. The back sprite, the mane sort of again, just flows out all directions, you can't really make too much out of it. Then in generation 3, in ruby, sapphire and emerald, we can see that it's flying in the air much like it was in yellow and silver. However, in emerald it seems to do some sort of... um. 360 dive turn, I don't really know. Um, and then Fire and Leaf Green, it's just pretty much swooping down. It's a bit of a change in the sprite, but not too too much of a change. Pretty much just swooping down to probably catch some prey. Now, the back sprite for Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald is shown now, and it's again, it's just a recolouring of the Generation 2 sprite. However, in Fire and Leaf Green, it was given a new back sprite, which you can see there, and it's the back sprite I'm pretty much used to since I played Fire and Leaf Green quite a lot. And I do like this back sprite quite a lot, as you can see, its entire main sort of flowing back. Then in Generation 4, in Diamond, Pearl and Platinum, it's standing upright with its um, crest flowing backwards with the wind, and it's being very regal, I would say. Then in Heart, Gold and Soul, Silver, it's very similar to the Fire and Leaf Green Sprite where it's swooping down, apart from we've had a few changes with its design where its wings are a bit longer, and its body seems to be a bit more slim. Then with its back sprite, I don't really like this one quite as much because you can't see the end of its mane, and it seems a bit more squished in than it was with Generation 3 in Fire and Leaf Green. Finally then in Generation 5, it seems to be well, adopting a new pose here, pretty much a mix of the Generation 4 sprite with just t turning the other way I would say, um, with its mane or crest again flowing back over its head, and the back sprite you can now see the entire sprite which I'm quite happy with as you can see its crest flowing all the way back down. Animation wise it's just stood there really being again very regal I would say. Then finally with the size comparison you can see at 1.5 meters or 4 foot 11 inches it's a fairly large Pokemon, probably large enough for a small child to ride on its back, but I'd be a bit worried about getting on it myself. So guys, that's it for this episode of Pokemon Origins, I hope you enjoyed it, leave a like and a comment down below, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Bye guys!